Hi everyone, my name is uh, Filippo Vigarala and um, my talk uh, is entitled uh, A, Tale A Tale of Tweaking and uh, I, will, I will be speaking uh, about me and uh, how I started from uh, developing uh, simple projects uh, to um, bigger ones and what uh, I learned uh, during this process. So, uh, I'm uh, 19 and uh, I'm based in Italy. Uh, I live there and uh, I study computer science at the University of Trento in North Italy. So, as you may have noticed, my main language is not English, so please forgive me for any mistake uh, I may make. And um, uh, as I said, I will be speaking how I started uh, developing Twix uh, and uh, how I came uh, to making uh, the biggest project so far I've made, uh, which is Sprint to Mastery. I joined the Jailbreak community as a user in uh, late 2010, and um, I actually started by jailbreaking my iPhone with uh, a tool name, named uh, Black Rain by Jihot. I didn't even know what a jailbreak was back then, and as I said uh, at the last year in New York, I just installed Winterboard and started customizing my phone without even knowing how all the all things worked. And uh, I really didn't know what to do with that phone, so I started like messing around with it and also uh, trying to write uh, simple scripts uh, uh, and uh, see what I could change uh, uh, in the phone. The first tweak uh, I released was uh, Stardia, which was a very simple project, uh, a very simple tweak uh, which allowed you to choose the starting tab of uh, the phone app. Um, it was more like a random project because I came up with it uh, like uh, trying to figure figuring out uh, how uh, I could change uh, uh, some internal parts of uh, iOS and uh, the first uh, thing that came to my mind was to try uh, seeing how the phone app worked and uh, yeah it was a very simple tweak uh, and it must have been so because uh, uh, I didn't know many things about uh, the language which is Objective-C uh, nor the runtime and uh, as soon as uh, I started the project and I released that I realized that uh, I had uh, many things uh, to, to learn and uh, I also discovered that making Twix uh, was really fun and it was actually amazing because uh, you could uh, take uh, um, original closed system like uh, iOS uh, and start changing things uh, and you could also understand how those, thing, those things worked uh, which is in my opinion amazing speaking of uh, closed a closed system as iOS but uh, among the different parts of uh, iOS uh, the one that I liked the most was Springboard which is the interface manager of, um, of iOS uh, the, the part of the system that shows you uh, basically all you see on the string on the screen so I started uh, inspected inspecting it uh, even more and uh, trying to mess around with it and um, while I was uh, inspecting springboard I came up uh, with uh, uh, another trick uh, which ended up being free sync and uh, I actually made it uh, with um, uh, Luke uh, which goes uh, by the handle Querti or Rui up on uh, Twitter. Uh, he's uh, another Italian guy and uh, he's even younger than me. And uh, what uh, we made basically allowed you to use uh, your iDevice uh, while it was syncing, which uh, may, seem, may seem like normal today, but uh, it wasn't uh, at the time of iOS 4. And you could um, enable different uh, visual effects during the sync process like um, heads up displays or alerts uh, or something like that uh, to notify you that uh, your device was syncing and um, it became obsolete with uh, iOS 5 because Apple implemented uh, the ability to use your iDevice while syncing uh, uh, natively so you didn't need uh, anything for that and uh, FreeSync was uh, my first uh, project published uh, in the CD store. And um, 
while I was making free sync, uh, I also uh, started uh, uh, inspecting Springboard even more. And um, uh, as you can read, uh, I tried to change uh, as many things as possible inside Springboard. And um, as soon as I started saying uh, that uh, I was working on something like that, uh, many people uh, told me they like uh, they liked the idea. So that's how basically the first version of uh, Sprintomize was born. And uh, you can see one of the first screenshots, I think, uh, of Sprintomize uh, with the different sections and the different uh, features uh, you could uh, <coughs> change. It was released uh, on March 12th, uh, 2011, and uh, it supported uh, iOS 4, which was the system that was there at the moment. And uh, the main um, scope of Sprintomize was to offer as many features as possible into uh, a single interface, like uh, um, someone had only to uh, open uh, Sprintomize and he could change uh, as many things uh, as he wanted, maybe with an easy to use uh, interface. However, being this my first uh, big project, it was uh, flowed uh, under different experts. Some of them may also seem uh, fun to experienced developers and also to beginners, maybe. Uh, the first thing uh, was that it was uh, a monolithic project, which means that uh, you can think about it as a big rock, uh, which is dif mm, very difficult to, to shape and to maintain. And all the code uh, which was uh, injected into Springboard was actually contained uh, in a single big file, which needed to be compiled every time. And there was uh, no scope separation. And with this, I mean that uh, all the code uh, was uh, put together and everything was dealing with everything, basically. Uh, like uh, the code uh, dealing with the uh, modification modifications of the lock screen were also messing around with uh, the, the code dealing with the modifications of uh, the dock uh, and maybe different things. The other thing which may seem uh, really mm, bad to all the developers in this room is that uh, uh, the settings of uh, Sprintomize were expensive. So uh, when you installed the, the first version of uh, Sprintomize, many people started noticing uh, like um, um, it was lagging their device. Uh, they couldn't play uh, games uh, at uh, the maximum frame rate anymore. Uh, so um, since uh, I didn't know very much uh, about uh, uh, what I was doing, actually, um, I realized uh, the mistake much later, like uh, after two weeks uh, it, has, it had been released. Um, I'm, I'm going to explain why I'm defining the settings expensive. They were stored uh, in a P list, which is a uh, uh, short term for property lists, uh, and they are just uh, simple text files containing uh, preferences, and they're used uh, on Apple system indeed to, to store settings and uh, preferences. So that's fine, that's not uh, the, the main problem. But uh, actually, nothing was never stored in memory. So you had to read uh, the whole P list every time. Uh, you needed uh, to know anything about uh, an option. So uh, the code actually looks like this. This is uh, um, a snippet from uh, the first version of uh, Sprintomize. Uh, and uh, it's a modification to the scroll view the scroll uh, uh, delegate method of uh, S by eco controller. Um, which is a class uh, inside Springboard. And uh, as you can see, you can um, mm, see two pieces of code, uh, which are actually two macros, which are reload prefs uh, and if d. And uh, by seeing what the, those macros do, uh, you can see that every time I needed uh, a setting, I was actually reading a dictionary, like uh, which is an object to store uh, information about uh, anything on iOS. I was reading the P list every time. And also, uh, I was checking the key inside the property list, uh, inside the dictionary, sorry, every time I needed uh, to know anything about an option. So that was very expensive. And uh, it 
because of the, the, the lag that many people w were notifying. And this is the expanded code. As, as you can see, it's reading the property list every time and checking the key uh, with uh, a default option uh, every time uh, you needed to check uh, an option. Uh, that was obviously improved uh, with uh, like uh, the first or the second update, uh, which came out uh, a couple of week a couple of weeks later. And so now uh, the the, p the property list uh, was uh, read only once uh, when the Springboard uh, uh, was loaded, and uh, every option was stored uh, in memory uh, using static variables. Uh, static variables are kind of uh, variables you can see within only code unit. So they cannot be used uh, across uh, multiple files uh, easily. And uh, yeah, uh, everything was uh, loaded uh, only once when at the, um, the moment when Springboard was loading. Another uh, flaw. Uh, last one was that uh, the settings bundle was implemented um, statically using only property lists. And uh, that's good for many tweaks, uh, but uh, uh, if you need to offer uh, more flexibility and more features, uh, you'll probably not be able to support uh, uh, what you, the users uh, want, actually. So that's how I decided to move on and uh, make a new project, which uh, is Sprintmize 2. And uh, I released it on December 1st, 2011. And uh, at first uh, it supported uh, iOS 5, and then iOS 6 when it came out. And um, it actually had uh, many more features than the first version of uh, Sprintmize. Uh, so anyone could uh, have a deeper customization of uh, their iDevice. It was a completely new project. Uh, it consisted of um, 20,000 lines of code uh, in, differ in different files. And um, it, it was made of uh, three components, basically. It's the tweak, which is the library injected uh, into Springboard, which actually uh, changes uh, things uh, inside uh, the system. The settings bundle, uh, where you could uh, change uh, the option and, and apply them and uh, a daemon, which is uh, another uh, an external program uh, which was always running on the system and uh, which uh, was used to uh, support uh, um, more um, deep, deep, deeper uh, functions like uh, renaming files or labeling uh, um, other components. Um, Sprintomize 2 also had the uh, pseudo dynamic setting, setting handling which means that uh, you could do, you could go inside the settings app or the Sprintomize application and change uh, different things uh, and uh, then decide to apply them using the reload button. And that will trigger uh, a reload inside Springboard, which uh, uh, try to reset uh, any state uh, of the, any internal state uh, uh, of the Springboard to show you the updated uh, changes. That was a uh, um, step forward from uh, the first version of Sprintomize, uh, where you had to respring in order to apply any any modification, even the smallest one. Um, Sprintomize 2 had uh, 19 updates in the span of two years, including bug fixes, uh, new features, uh, listening also to the requests of users. And uh, it also supported uh, iOS 7 with the first uh, jailbreak that was released for it. However, also Sprintomize 2 had its issues. And um, speaking of the structure of the project, it had uh, a massive structure because uh, uh, some files, uh, even though the code was split across multiple files, some files needed to be uh, included in other uh, at compilation time which means that uh, I ended up uh, having uh, um, a big file uh, containing most of the code anyway. Even though uh, they were physically separated, they were merged, uh, merged at the compile time. And this led, led to uh, long compilation time because uh, every time you had to change a single line of code, uh, 
um, all the projects uh, had to be recompiled, uh, well, all the tweak, uh, not uh, the other components, and there was still no separation between uh, different code units. Different code units. Uh, also, the hooks, which are the basically the modifications you apply to the system, were not structured. So uh, every time uh, uh, something changed inside the uh, Springboard, in this case, uh, you could not uh, like. Uh, uh, try to update uh, that single part, uh, but maybe you had to copy over uh, big portions of code, and that uh, w made uh, the project uh, difficult to maintain. Also, speaking of the build environment, it was uh, already based on Theos, which uh, I'll explain later. Uh, but um, in order to be compiled properly, uh, it relied on um, uh, manually fixed uh, headers and headers are files used uh, in different programming languages uh, which uh, contains basically information informations that uh, the compiler needs to know in order to properly uh, compile um, your program and so you can not just uh, port over that um, that project to another new machine for example but you had to uh, completely um, rebuild the build environment uh, with uh, all those uh, little things uh, and hacky headers, um, which made it its, uh, its structure. Uh, so, when iOS 7 came, I started uh, looking uh, to update uh, Sprintomize, and uh, um, I started digging into Spring Mode again, and I realized, realized that uh, there were m there were many changes. Uh, including in Springboard, and uh, iOS 7 broke uh, different uh, APIs or internal features on which uh, Sprintomize relied on, and uh, also at first uh, all the jailbreak tools uh, um, were broken, and also the jailbreaks uh, themselves uh, because of the changes uh, introduced uh, with iOS 7. Indeed, so the upgrade path from uh, Sprintomize was actually pretty steep. And um, it would uh, have been uh, a lot m of more work to refactor all the code and uh, refactor the whole project uh, in order to update it, rather than uh, ins instead uh, uh, making a new uh, restructured and uh, organized uh, project. So that's actually how I started uh, Sprintomize 3, which was uh, uh, which I started in early October using. Uh, uh, jailbreak tool provide, provided by WinOCM and uh, uh, as I said I made it as a completely new project and um, I started making it from uh, fine tuning the build environment uh, and uh, I started writing different scripts uh, I, it was still relying on Theos but uh, I started integrating it with uh, my, my own uh, scripts uh, which uh, performed uh, build verification for maybe also the different uh, architectures you need to compile in. And also, uh, it allowed me to have uh, an automated uh, CBS system, controversial system, uh, and everything relies on Git. Um, so to avoid having uh, a, a lot of fix-ups uh, to do manually to the headers, I decided to spend uh, some time uh, uh, in order to get uh, um, properly a proper set uh, of uh, headers, so uh, I dumped the Springboard with class dump, as many of the developers know, and uh, I started uh, uh, writing other scripts uh, and uh, fixing uh, uh, all the headers in order to have uh, a compilable uh, set of headers I could include uh, in Sprintomize and also in other projects because if I need uh, to make uh, a new tweak, for example, I don't need to uh, manually copy and paste uh, uh, the new interfaces, which are um, classes declarations and uh, um, other things in order to make it work. I can just uh, include uh, the set of uh, headers I made and everything will work fine. Uh, the project uh, is made of uh, four different uh, components, uh, a library, uh, which I've been explaining right now, 
uh, this week, uh, which is, as I said, uh, uh, the um, dynamic library which gets uh, injected into um, the Springboard to modify things. And another library containing uh, the UI code, uh, which means uh, the code dealing with the user interface and different components, and the settings bundle. As I said, I'll be speaking mainly about uh, the library, uh, which um, uh, allowed me to deal with the settings, uh, specifically, uh, in a proper manner. Uh, so, uh, I mentioned settings because uh, they're probably the um, biggest challenge in Sprintomize to, um, to deal with, because uh, I have a big number of settings, uh, a big number of uh, variables to maintain, a big number of features to check. So uh, I needed to find um, a proper way to both store the settings uh, in memory and, in this and on the disk, and uh, also a proper way to handle user modifications uh, in the most uh, dynamic way as possible. So speaking of the storage way, uh, and on the disk, uh, mm, I'll cut it short because just use proper list. They're the most uh, efficient way to store any kind of settings, uh, speaking of uh, tweak settings. And they're fast, like uh, even faster than uh, other external file formats. And uh, indeed, you have no overhead of using uh, external libraries to manage your settings. Uh, so uh, you're completely sure that everything will work uh, even across uh, system updates. Uh, speaking of uh, storage in memory, which means uh, um, how I um, store in memory what uh, I read from uh, the disk, uh, as you may have understood in the previous previous versions, I was storing everything uh, using static variables, but uh, those make made uh, the code uh, messy because uh, uh, basically you you cannot uh, uh, apply all the all the stuff you can learn about uh, um, multiple files programming, and uh, you cannot uh, properly uh, separate uh, different uh, code units. And also, there's no other, mm, there's no proper way to uh, create groups of them by um, standing on the context that they're based on, uh, except uh, by using uh, um, verbose names, which is fine for a little number of settings, but uh, cannot be applied to like hundreds of variables. So uh, what uh, I came up with was um, a system of uh, context-aware structures, which means that uh, you had you have uh, different structures in memory. Uh, you can think uh, about them as uh, objects, uh, which uh, are always are always sitting there, and um, uh, each of them uh, is. Um, Mm, is directed to a specific scope, like uh, there is the one dealing with uh, control center modifications, the one dealing with lock screen modifications, and go and like this. And um, implementing this kind of structure also allowed me to implement um, a consistent way to both read, uh, save, and change all the options because every single structure uh, actually knows uh, how to. Uh, save itself to disk, how to um, read the data about itself from uh, uh, another um, uh, another data which is floating around in memory, um, and also to uh, reload uh, what needs to be reloaded inside Springboard. So uh, every structure uh, knows what uh, uh, needs to be reloaded uh, in order to apply the new options that uh, has just re that it has just read. So um, the main challenge with settings, other than uh, storing and representing them, was to reload them uh, as dyna dynamically as possible. So uh, the main purpose is that the user should be able to change uh, as many things as he want, as he wants, uh, without uh, uh, having to respring or to reload anything manually. Mm. This kind of settings uh, follow the uh, follows the best effort policy, uh, which means that uh, you could I can try to apply as much as possible and ask for a spring only for deeper changes. 
But uh, as I said, the main problem is how would you handle uh, different uh, uh, um, massive number of changes uh, uh, to many options? Like uh, if you have a couple of uh, variables that needs, need to be reloaded, you have basically no problem because uh, um, you the user changes uh, some option and you can read all of them, uh, like all the variables you have, without uh, any overhead. But if you have a uh, um, big number of options, that's, that may be a problem. So this is the uh, typical approach uh, to creating a, a tweak uh, which implements uh, dynamic settings. And you have, uh, as you can see from the, um, the chart, uh, you have uh, a dynamic library, which is uh, the tweak, uh, actually, containing the hooking code, which is, as I said, as I previous previously said, uh, the code uh, uh, dealing with uh, the actual modifications uh, inside Springboard, and uh, dealing and uh, containing also uh, the code to handle settings. Uh, this library uh, would uh, would get loaded into a process, which in my case is Springboard. And uh, when uh, uh, at the moment it, it it's loaded, it will uh, install the different hooks, uh, which means all the modifications. R read uh, all the settings uh, for the first time, uh, store them in memory, and then uh, it will re uh, register a callback uh, for a notification uh, in order to reload the settings uh, uh, dynamically without uh, uh, the need uh, of respringing them. And the other component is the mm -hmm. settings bundle, uh, which contains, which usually contains uh, the code to show the user the different options, the different settings and also to change uh, the settings and <coughs> save them to the disk. And um, when uh, a user will need to change uh, an option, uh, it will open the settings up. And um, after an option uh, ha has been changed, uh, the settings bundle will post uh, a notification uh, across the system, which is actually handled by the notification center, uh, which is not the one uh, you can see by handling and by dragging down uh, the, your finger on the springboard, but it's an internal um, system of the springboard, of the system uh, made to dispatch uh, different notifications uh, across the system indeed. And uh, that, um, that um, system will, will actually call the callback you registered before, uh, and uh, uh, the library injected into springboard uh, will get to know that something has changed and uh, uh, it will uh, reload all the settings uh, and apply them and maybe also reload uh, some springboard states uh, if it needs to. Uh, however, this works fine for a limited number of settings uh, where you can uh, uh, reload all the settings at, at once, but um, it's uh, like uh, it doesn't really work f when you have uh, uh, a big number of options to reload and to manage. Uh, a way some someone came up with was to implement uh, multiple notifications, but uh, uh, that actually uh, revealed to be um, not really flexible because uh, uh, every time you you wanted to add. Uh, a new section or deal with uh, new modifications, you had to modify the notifications or maybe add new notifications, uh, which made all the um, infrastructure really, really messy and difficult to maintain. So what uh, I came up with was uh, another uh, approach, uh, which uh, uh, is based on splitting uh, the um, scope across different components of the project. In fact, in Sprintomize 3, in the dynamic library of, mm, of the tweak, uh, there is only the hooking code, uh, the code applying the modifications, which uh, gets loaded into Springboard and uh, install the hooks uh, and uh, um, can load the different settings uh, by uh, using uh, uh, some features implemented, actually implemented uh, in a common shared library which is the library Sprintomize Ship Suite, uh, which contains, uh, among uh, other things, uh, also the code to handle settings, because that's what we're speaking about right now. And uh, 
after loading settings using the common code from the library, uh, it will reload the, the Spring Boost data uh, and uh, get everything set up correctly in order to show the user all the modifications uh, he needs. And uh, the settings bundle, which is the other component which was there also in the previous approach, uh, works uh, as uh, it used to do uh, in the previous approach indeed. It will get loaded into the settings app or the Spring Tomize application. The user will be able to change the settings, but uh, when a single setting is changed, um, the settings bundle will actually call uh, some functions inside the Spring Tomize library, and uh, uh, the library is basically handling all the changes that gets. Uh, um, that, that get uh, uh, mm, applied to the mm, to the system, and uh, the the only uh, part of, of the project which uh, knows about uh, how to handle the different settings uh, is actually only the library. The other components uh, are just uh, mm, um, are just are just based uh, on the library, uh, which uh, handles everything basically. So, what uh, mm, you need to do. Is uh, what uh, I need to do is to send a single message containing uh, uh, the changes that uh, have been applied across the system, and inside Springboard there is basically um, callback, a single callback, which is able to determine uh, which structure uh, of the one I mentioned before uh, should handle the changes and which structure uh, needs uh, to be reloaded uh, in order to apply those changes. So. Uh, instead of reading them every time from the disk, as I said, uh, it's uh, the notification itself which contains the different changes. So um, the settings are read from the disk inside Springboard only once, only when the Springboard gets loaded. Uh, instead, when something changes, a uh, delta of uh, the settings is uh, sent across the system from the settings bundle to the um, library inside Springboard. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, the callback I mentioned before is able to update only what's needed. And uh, every single structure um, of the ones uh, I've mentioned before uh, actually has an internal callback, uh, callback uh, which uh, reload, reloads uh, the proper state uh, of Springboard uh, um, of um, in which uh, the structure actually applies the modifications. So the reload uh, process uh, looks like this. Uh, when an option is changed, uh, um, delta, uh, which is a um, uh, difference, is computed. And uh, that delta is both applied internally in the settings bundle and uh, is also sent across the system to apply the changes uh, uh, to the springboard. Uh, so uh, when it's applied internally, the settings bundle using the library uh, saves the settings to the disk. And uh, when the Springboard receives uh, the, the notifications containing the changes, uh, it's able to dispatch the, the changes to the right structure and uh, uh, after that uh, to invoke uh, uh, the proper callback uh, which reloads uh, the Springboard state uh, related to the structure. Other challenges I had to face uh, with the Spring Tomize 3 was the new ARM64 architecture of the 5S, uh, which forced uh, me and other Twig developers to pay more attention to the different data types because uh, um, you now need to look at both the 32 and 64 bit uh, code in order to determine uh, which kind uh, uh, of data you are modifying. Because um, uh, if you're thinking about uh, the wrong uh, kind of data, uh, like uh, which has a different width in bits uh, on different systems, uh, you can you could get uh, different bugs, uh, um, which uh, may be hard to be solved. So you need to inspect both 32 and 64 binaries in order to uh, have something which is uh, uh, portable code, um, code that can work uh, on both uh, 32 and 64 bit. Uh, also, uh, in Sprint 3, I had uh, a completely new interface, 
which was uh, mainly designed by Shurnix. This is over there. And um, uh, he also helped me not only with uh, graphics, uh, but also with um, everything related to user experience. So, um, for example, uh, the title of the sec uh, the title of uh, the navigation bar changing colors uh, related to the um, color of the section you're in and other kind of stuff. Um, he was uh, really valuable, and he gave me a lot of suggestions. And uh, um, what I implemented also in the settings bundles were uh, was a, a more dynamic system of panels and options. So um, now everything is implemented inside the code, uh, which me, uh, which uh, makes uh, uh, the project uh, um, actually easier to maintain, even though uh, it's everything coded, and uh, it's also <coughs> easier to localize the project. Um, another thing uh, I added in uh, Sprintomize 3 was uh, some kind of uh, inline documentation, which means that uh, if, you if you open the settings interface, you have uh, a little explanation for every option you're about to change, and you don't need to look uh, the explanation up uh, some kind of uh, documentation, or maybe uh, try to figure it out uh, what it does, uh, and all kind of things, but you have a, a short uh, explanation right uh, under the option. And uh, all those uh, explanations, along uh, with the name of the options uh, and uh, the name of the section and everything else, uh, is actually localized. Mm -hmm. So indeed, uh, localization was uh, a very important part uh, of the project because uh, um, I realized uh, uh, also in Sprintomize 2, many more people were using uh, uh, the product after uh, adding localizations because uh, um, people who mm, do not speak English uh, uh, tend to have, uh, uh, tend to mm, use uh, only um, applications with which uh, implements their, um, their own languages because uh, they don't want uh, another applications with uh, a different language. So that's really important when you're making a new product to deal with localizations uh, and to offer, to offer uh, everyone uh, the best uh, experience uh, you can. So these are the names, uh, the Twitter handles of uh, the people who helped me localize uh, the applications, the application. And um, speaking about uh, some stats, about uh, some statistics about uh, Sprint Mastery, it was uh, released uh, on January 25th uh, of this year. It, it has been updated six uh, times uh, since then and with many different features added already. And uh, uh, as many of you probably know, because uh, I think uh, I spoke about it on Reddit or somewhere, um, I'm collecting data from uh, Sprintomize installation, but I'm not the NSA or anything like that. So uh, I'm only collecting the um, device model and data to identify the device uh, and to not have uh, duplicates. And uh, I can say that Sprintomize has been installed uh, on more than uh, uh, 900,000 devices so far in um, two months because uh, uh, those statistics are from more than 10 days ago. Uh, and if you do the math, uh, it's something like uh, 600 new devices every hour. Please note that I'm speaking about uh, devices and not uh, users. Uh, I'm not tracking uh, users in any way, but just uh, uh, devices. So uh, everyone mm, could have uh, like uh, three or four devices uh, on which uh, install Sprintomize. Uh, and I, I cannot know that I only count devices. Um, I'm counting devices and also keeping track, tipping, keeping track uh, of uh, the different models Sprintomize uh, is Sprintomize is installed on, and uh, as you can see, um, the vast majority of the devices are actually iPhones. And uh, uh, if you look uh, at the number of iPads, you can see that uh, it's uh, less than a fourth of the total devices. And uh, if you are a Twig developer. You may want to consider that, uh, um, whether to release uh, 
uh, an iPhone only version of the tweak or, or an iPhone only version because uh, as you can see uh, even though uh, these stats are related only to Sprint to Miles and they may not apply to all the different projects uh, well you can see that uh, the number of iPhones uh, is really big compared to the number of iPads uh, another number which is uh, quite uh, frightening I say is the one of uh, the one related unfortunately to piracy and as many tweak developers uh, said uh, over time uh, unfortunately there there's a um, high piracy rate uh, like uh, in every ecosystem and uh, um, the, um, the percentage of um, pirates uh, is around 92 or 93 percent um, and uh, that's pretty common among uh, the different tweaks uh, you can ask any any developer with a uh, CS store product uh, uh, and he, he say that uh, um, pretty much uh, he has the same stats or even worse but uh, um, differently from um, many from what uh, many developers said uh, you cannot convert uh, all uh, that ratio to legit users so it's not actually that uh, all those users will actually buy um, uh, your product so you must you should just uh, uh, concentrate on making the product better without uh, fighting piracy um, very much uh, finally, uh, you can, if you're interested in Sprintomize, also uh, technical questions, you can go to the dedicated subreddit on Reddit, and uh, I must uh, say thank you to Brita, which, uh, who helped me a lot uh, getting the subreddit started, and she also gave me different suggestions about uh, how to handle it. And uh, well, uh, speaking about uh, what's coming in the future weeks uh, um, an update is almost ready and uh, well, thanks everyone who helped me develop uh, Sprint Omizer and also uh, Craig who allowed me to come here speaking also this year and that's it thanks Philip I um, we don't really have time for questions right now, but if you have questions um, for Filippo, we'll be doing questions and answers at the end of the day anyway. So, But um, I'm going to go straight and introduce Ryan Petridge up to the stage, everybody. Woo!